Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. This is part one of the Castiles. This extension lets you create realistic structural elements such as columns, beams, and the connection between these elements. So if you're looking to create steel structures quickly and accurately, then this is the tool for you. So let's get started. So first we have to install Deca Steels and its library. So head over to the Deca Steels official site. The link will be in the descriptions and download both the extensions RBZ file and the free profile library. Now to download the profile library, you have to make an order. Don't worry, this is free. So be sure to select the correct library for yourself, enter your email information and confirm your order. And after that, you should receive an email with a download link. Open the SketchUp Extension Manager and install both of these files. First, the Deca Steels extension and then the library profile. And in case you want to check for your license information, go to Extensions, Deca Steels, and select License. Notice how I already have some tags loaded in my SketchUp files, and I should have some more materials and components as well. So, to get started, I recommend creating a new project. So, let's go to Extension. Deca Steels and select new project. Now from the template, pick the ones that best suit your needs. So from Canada metric or US Imperial, SketchUp is going to restart. So you might want to save an existing file. Select a standard for a more personalized setup. Remember that you can create, change and customize your own template as well as your own standards. We've now created a new project and you can notice how we have new materials, new components and tags. So this is a Deca Steels toolbar. You have the builders dialog to create all your structural elements. We have path line snapping, extend tool and level manager, which are features we will explore throughout the video and a shop drawing feature that will be released in the future. Now, before we create our column or any other structural elements, you want to check these settings. So make sure your material is set to default unless you want to change it to a specific material in the library and your tag is set correctly. Because we're creating a column, this should be set to column as well. Make sure that cover by tag is turned on and your current layer is set to untagged. This is to make sure your structural elements are set by the colors on their tag. So let's start with the grid lines. For now, we're going to leave the default settings as they are. You want to click on the build icon to activate the command. The first click sets the start of your grid. You can then drag and the second click completes the grid. Following that, you can create additional grid lines with every other click. Keep in mind that you can also specify a value for the distance. As an example, I'm setting these grids 10 to 20 feet apart. Now to create perpendicular grid lines, press escape once to reset the build tool. We can then change the label to a number and follow the same workflow. Click two new points for the first grid line and create additional grid lines with every other click. Suppose I wanted to add one grid line between these two. We can activate the command. Press control to toggle adjacent mode for Mac users is the option key and select an adjacent grid line. So I'm going to enter a value of 10 feet to set it in the middle of these two grid lines. We can update the label to C1 and to confirm your changes, you can click the green check mark or hit control enter. So let's repeat that between grids three and four, activate the build command, press control to toggle adjacent mode, select the grid line, and set a distance of 10 feet to set the new grid. We'll change the tag to 3A and hit Control Enter to confirm the changes. As you can see, it's a very simple and practical workflow. If we take a look at our settings, we can adjust a couple of things about the grid line. We can adjust the diameter of the bubble. For example, we can change this to 2 feet and hit Control Enter to confirm the change. We can also change the font to a couple of different options. And we can change the line type. For example, we can change between dashed lines, dotted and solid line. 
In addition, we can also change the location of the line. For example, if I select C1 and 3A, I can go into the location settings and change from beginning to end and confirm the change to swap the location of the bubbles. Another tool that is very interactive with the structural element is the extend tool, and we can use it to reduce or expand structural elements. And in this case, I'm going to use it to reduce the grid lines. So let's select the extend tool, hover over at the end of the grid line until we get this icon and click and drag to reduce the line. This is also another practical tip because grid lines don't always have to intersect with each other. Now let's take a look at how we can create some columns. I can select from many of the options or I can type exactly what I want. Let's adjust the elevation or the height of the column. So I'll set this to 24 feet and we'll leave the rest of the settings as they are. Let's enable path line snapping, activate the build tool. And now I can easily place a column at every grid point intersection. So let's adjust one single column and change the base elevation. If I set this to five feet, you will notice that the length is 19 feet because the column is five foot off the ground. We can also rotate the column. Let's set this to 90 degrees. And let's suppose I make a couple of more changes. I also have the option to copy and paste the properties of this column. So I can right click and copy properties. Select my other columns and right click paste properties. The next thing we can do is to add a base plate. So I can select all of my columns and for my options, select BP4. We also have the options to create our own custom base plates. So we'll explore this later in the video. And for the plates, we also have a couple adjustments. We can change the rotation, let's say 45 degrees. And we can also adjust the offset in the X and Y axis. So for example, I can add a value of six inches here and I can shift this base plate six inches in the X axis. And as I shown before, we can also extend and reduce the column. So if I activate the extend tool, I can hover over the columns and set this down to nine feet. So it's a very interactive tool that you can use with most of the structural elements. So next we're going to explore how we can create beams. First, we're going to select our profile. You can select from the options or type if you know what you're looking for. And then we get to pick the placement point. So in order to see the placement point, let's activate the build tool so we can have a preview of our profile. And currently our placement point is set to top middle. And you can see as I snap, the placement occurs in the top middle of the column. From our options, we can change this to top right, center left, or center. And you can see that the placement changes to different locations. Based on our placement point, we can also adjust the rotation. So for example, we can change this to 45 degrees or 90 degrees. Additionally, we can also shift the placement by adjusting the X and Y offsets. This is in case you want to shift to a specific distance from the placement point. For the mirror setting, let's try this with an L-shaped beam, and this setting simply flips your profile to the opposite direction. So let's enable path line snapping for a quick placement at the center of the columns, and start to create our beam. And as you can see, it is much easier to snap to the columns with the setting enabled. And additionally, you can also use the extend tool to extend and reduce the beams. 
in this next example, I'm going to show you how to create a curved beam. So I have four columns and four curved arcs, and we'll create four separate beams connecting to these columns. So make sure that your curve is selected, pick your profile and your placement, activate the build tool, and click at the starting point of your curve to confirm. And as you can see, the beam will take the shape of the curve. Repeat the same process for the other curves. In here, I changed the placement to the center and you can see how we changed the orientation of the beam. So that's gonna be all for this video. Hopefully a nice part one to Deca Steels. Be sure to follow Mindsights on Instagram and on Facebook and check their website for more updates. To watch part two, click the video on the screen and we'll catch you guys on the next video.